Coming up, we're talking sex with Dr. Doug Weiss, and it could save your marriage. The conversation starts now. Real friends. Loving. Laughing. And learning together. Sharing stories, one life at a time. So grab a seat. Welcome to Joni Table Talk. Well, sex is an integral part of any marriage relationship, but some couples suffer silently in a sexless marriage, and it's more common than you might think. So today, with the help of our guest, we're bringing you expert advice on this growing issue and what might be causing it. But first, joining me around the table is my newly married that needs to learn everything she can, daughter, hey. Rachel Brown. How are you? I'm good. I'm it's so good. funny because you've never been on the married programs. I know. It's, it's a whole new world. But, you know, I'm loving it. And I think that is such an important topic because, yeah. you know, the church doesn't talk about, mm -hmm. you know, these types of things very often, but it's important yeah. and it's something that, you know, we all deal with and we all face when we get married and, mm -hmm. I mean, and God, hey, who doesn't God, like talking about sex? And I'm God created it. Okay, Anna Kendall, how are you? I'm delighted to be here and delighted with this program. And you know, the greatest thing to, to, to do to handle sex is to communicate. Yes. You, mm -hmm. If you communicate. can communicate, you can work it out. And yes. so you've been married how long now? 52 years. Oh. 52 oh. years, I can't believe that. That's awesome. <laughs> Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm good. It's and a it's, hot topic. It's a hot topic. <laughs> and you're ready to go, right? I'm ready to go. Okay. Well, he has more than 30 years' experience as a professional counselor dealing with marriage, sex, and addiction issues. And he's here to talk about being sexless and married. Please welcome our dear friend, Dr. Doug Weiss. Hi. Hi. Hey. 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 Welcome. Hi, ladies. Hey. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, it's always great to have you on the table. So let's talk about this issue of being sexless and married. I was just surprised at how much this goes on. That it's I, a lot. Like you, you deal with. How I many, deal with it a lot. How many couples week. have you dealt with over the course of your? Well, out of the several thousand couples I've worked days, with, yeah. you know, probably a good thousand. Wow. You know, wow. because. Um, People don't know where to go in the church if they're not having sex. Mm -hmm. You know, we were just talking upstairs with different people who, who work here. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, my friend just told me they're not, they're not having sex. And yeah. my friend told me that too. Like, I didn't know what to tell them. Yeah, the yeah. Sexlessness is rampant. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just something that we're so quiet about because we don't talk about sex in general in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely not going to talk about, well, we're not having sex. Yeah, the issues. That's yeah. right, yeah. Why, why do you think that if you're married, you wouldn't? Have sex. Especially like, for a newly married over here. I know, I'm trying well, to figure it, 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 it's, it's just confusing to say, hey, I want to marry you and have sex with you and then not follow through with keeping your word. And so that's what sexless and married is about. We walk through eight reasons why couples don't have sex, and some of them are easier to manage than others. Mm -hmm. This just came in today. This is from Canada. By all means, keep having the experts talk about the issues the enemy is using to create havoc on the family unit. One thing I know is that if I had had been privy to these kinds of programs and discussions 30 years ago and understanding that mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. such intimate issues in the public forum is not a sin, I could have done better as a wife and mother and perhaps saved my marriage. Mm. She, she was saying that we never had these kind of discussions oh, in right. church. That's valid. And it was like a sin to talk about it. Right. I mean, how many... People do you talk to whose parents never talk to them about Most. sex or grandparents? Most. When I do men's conferences, I ask you how many guys had a good talk with your dad about sex. It's always 3%. Mm. Wow. So, so you have ignorant men yeah. raising ignorant men. <laughs> 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 and you could do the same for women. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in the 90 percentile. We're really having a conversation. And then you take them to church and they don't talk about it. And so what do they learn? Junior high and high school and on the streets and on TV shows and now on their cell phones. And then that's really dangerous and that's on TV shows. that's bad information. It's bad on, information. Now, this is something I know is really a hot button issue with you, Rachel, because you were talking about, you know, even friends that you had that would get married and have problems in that area and not have anyone to talk to or, or really not anyone really explain to them about what sex was yeah. and how it operates. In you know, marriage. I thought what Anna said earlier was so key. I think communication is so important, especially when you first get married and you're learning each other and learning about each other. 
but sometimes that can be a little awkward, you know, mm -hmm. in talking about that. But that's the only way that you grow in intimacy and, mm -hmm. and relationship with one another. And if it's awkward talking about your, you know, to your significant other about it, mm -hmm. then think about how awkward it would be to talk to somebody else about it. And so I feel like what a lot of people do, and I'm sure you see this, mm -hmm. is they just don't say anything at all. Right. And they suffer silently. And there's, there's millions of people that are sexless and married in the Church of Jesus yeah. Christ. And they, they go to bed alone. They feel mm -hmm. disconnected. They feel ugly. They mm -hmm. feel unwanted. Mm -hmm. And it's painful yeah. day after day to be having the backside of the person who says, I, I will love, honor, and cherish mm -hmm. you, and they mm -hmm. won't even touch you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and I think... They cling to their side of the bed. Yeah, and, yes. and I think the communicating and being educated. Educated, yes. that's what this is all about. Yes. We should probably do a little bit of that. Yeah, let's do some of that. <laughs> Tell us why people are sexless and married. Let what me give is? you the eight reasons. I've been counseling couples now for 30 years, okay? And over that time, I've learned a few things, okay? So let me just rip through those. Okay. Uh, the number one reason is sex addiction. He's into porn or, you know, something, and he's taking care, and he doesn't no longer connect it to the real person of his wife. So he's connecting to something to, else. So fantasy, pornography. And so how like does that. the enemy especially use this for a man in the brain and all well, of that? Well, his brain actually attaches to an object reality, and so he now prefers the object reality, which is usually started when he's 14, so it had a running start on the wife anyway. Mm. And if he maintains it, it can take over where he doesn't really want and he a real person. If he gets married, that'll all go away, but it doesn't well, go away. Well, like I talked to a guy this morning, he thought marriage and ministry would cure him. I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, those don't cure you of mm -hmm. sex addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the second would be intimacy anorexia, which we've done some shows on, mm -hmm. where they withhold love, uh, they withhold spiritually, emotionally, and sexually from their spouse. Everywhere else, they, they're wonderful, but they're too busy, they blame, they withhold love, praise, sex. Okay, well, let's go back to that, that first one again. So, okay. sexual addiction, because I know some of you are like, wait, 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 I don't you know, I'm, that's the problem we have. So how do, how do they get help for the sexual addiction? Well, they definitely need to get an accountability partner, get honest, again, get educated. Shine we have, the light on we it. We have several books, drdougweiss.com, several books on there. We have mm -hmm. phone counseling. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of free things they can do uh, that they can get involved with to get well on that. So there's a lot of resources But you that. have that as your personal I've been free for 30, 30 years. years. Mm -hmm. But the big thing, the big turn for you, because you prayed, fasted, you were a Christian, oh, you yeah. God, all, none of that worked. Well, that's because that's not the formula. That's not what God's Word says. Right. God's Word says, confess your faults one to another whether you like it or not. And yes. you may be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you what? may be and, what? And if you do, then you, you may be healed. You may be and, healed. And your yeah. prayers of righteous Rachel, man Rachel, you don't are, know that. That's his signature is that laugh. You weren't ready yeah. for that? It's <laughs> a great laugh. I love that. Yes. Okay, so shining the light on that and having accountability, number one. Number two... Intimacy anorexia. Why, how does that happen? Well, that happens either through trauma or non-attachment to the parent uh, or, or even sexual addiction be part of that, where, again, the person's soul is set up so they don't want to be intimate with you. But why? Intimacy with you costs them a lot. Hmm. So you should get married if you have that problem. Well, they don't know they have it until after they get married. Oh. Wow. They date normally. That's the problem. So is that when we dated, you were all over me. Now you won't touch so me. So how do you help couples that come in with that? Well, they fly in for three or five days or they do telephone counseling and there's usually issues as to why he or she is like that. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's family of origin, sexual abuse or addiction or s trauma of some kind. Mm -hmm. And then we give them exercises to work toward connecting to each other because oftentimes there's an attachment deficit. Mm -hmm. And we give these exercises that really help them to attach to the soul of their spouse. Mm -hmm. And then they set up a sexual agreement and they start going down the road and they get better. So do, have you seen a lot of uh, couples that are able to recover? Oh, yeah, most of the, I see get better. Mm -hmm. I, I live in happily ever after, like 98% of the time in my practice. Oh, wow. Okay, wow, we haven't had sex for 10 years. We went to Dr. Weiss. We're having sex two or three times a week. Yeah. We hated each other. We came to Dr. Weiss. Now we like each other. Okay, yeah. so that happens all the time. If it didn't, right. I'd go home and play golf or something. <laughs> right, you know, But right. we see miracles all the time because the people are willing to work. Now, if someone's not willing to work, don't bring them to me. Don't bring them yeah. to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. right. Can't it's, help you if you're so not you, willing to do the work. You have to have some people that you diagnose that way and then they're not willing to change. You can't do anything. I can't help them. Yeah. But I'm straight up about it. Like, if you're too lazy, do the work. It's not going to help. I can't help you. Yeah. But yeah. God can't help you either, so I'm not really feeling bad about that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, if you don't want to grow up, don't. Because God know, is the one who myself. helped you with even helping people. God will help us all. Yes. He wants us all to have a great sex life. He wants us all to have a great marriage. He's he the one who all. created it. We have yeah. to keep Absolutely. saying that. Hollywood did yeah. not create sex. Well, and marriage is three people, so it's not just unfaithfulness in a, in a spiritual sense to your wife or your husband that you're withholding mm -hmm. yourself. You're withholding your, a level of intimacy from the whole marriage, which is God and you two. Mm -hmm. Marriage is three people, not two people. Right. And yeah. so when you shut that down in a marriage, it affects everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like this lady who's, you know, she's so holy in church, but she won't even initiate sex with her husband. Well, that's, mm -hmm. 
hypocrisy. Well, the, yeah. and it almost no. makes you question their love for the other person. Well, it makes that person question the love. That's for sure. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so we number one. So sex one, addiction, number intimacy, two, anorexia, number sexual three. abuse. Someone who's been sexually abused might have legitimate sexual pain that they need to address, but it is addressable. The cross has addressed it. Yes. And there are practical things they can do as far as cleansing temple, doing anger work, doing forgiveness work, work through it. If they're intentionally trying to work on it, then they really are trying to heal. Mm -hmm. If they're using that as something to hide behind, I've been sexually abused, my perpetrator does not define who I am sexually, right. Jesus defines who I am sexually. Mm -hmm. You never give your identity to a perpetrator. But you're always right. shining the light of truth on all these things you're talking right. about. Yeah, you gotta, so, you gotta be so honest about are, it. Do you have couples that where one of them has been sexually abused or molested and they've never told anyone, oh, it's yeah. completely in the dark. Oh yeah, I'm, I've been told that I was sexually abused by many people and I'm the first one that they've told because I've asked them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes guys especially, mm -hmm. I'm going through their sex history. I've done more sex histories than probably any person on the planet. I don't, they don't give a prize for that, but if they did, I'd probably get it. <laughs> yeah. And so, so you've seen everything. Well, I've definitely, I've asked the questions <laughs> thousands yeah. of times. Yeah. And it won't be uncommon for me to say to a man, okay, your first sexual encounter with someone, how old were you? I was 14, how old was she? She was 18 or 25. I go, well, that's wow. sexual abuse. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They've oh, never looked at it that way. I've never seen that. Well, look wow. at this. Yes. And I go through your history and I go through your patterns and look how it changed from this moment on. This changed over here. Do you not see how this was trauma for you and how you got raped? It wasn't like you so wanted... So it affected them even though they were they like, didn't know oh, it didn't it really bother me. No, they thought they got lucky. Guys think they get lucky if they get sex with a 30-year-old when you're 16. Yeah. They don't realize it's rape until they're about 40. Yeah, yes, that's true. Wow. Okay. So, so that's another one. So, so number four. So that's sexual abuse. Um, another one is... Uh, not understanding the sex language of, of your spouse, okay, where you have different languages and you don't know how to communicate which language you are because you don't even have the language for the language, mm, yeah. okay? That's another conversation. So do you remember what those are? The, the five sex languages? Thing. Yes, desire, celebration, um, patience. Um, oh, fun. Was, fun is one. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one where they... Um, acceptance? Acceptance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go through those just real, real quick. So, because... I know we have a love language. We have a sex language. We you have a sex language, yes. Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for okay. sex language. Okay. Hallelujah. So fun. I want a sex language, Jesus. <laughs> so what is I want to speak in sex you, language. You must be. <laughs> you speak in all five of them. Just go for it. You must be the fun sex language. I don't know. I'm not disclosing. Oh, you're not disclosing. Okay, so what is the fun sex language? A fun sex language is someone who wants to have fun Wait, with sex. Wait, you told your wife was the patient's sex language today I on think the show. She, I think she got that, yeah. But she's wonderful. She knows that. Yeah. So, but, you, but you can tell hers, but you can't tell yours. No, well, I don't want doctor. her to know. No, oh. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, my wife knows, and she she ministers to me. She's a gracious woman. But she can because she's intelligent about it. Yeah. Like, before she had this language, she wasn't as intelligent about it. She was kind of guessing. Yeah. But now she's, like, intentional, like, you know, and it's, wow, the sex is gone. Okay. Like, wow. Okay, right? so fun. So if, fun if is fun. someone who, who wants to uh, have fun with sexuality. So they're going to want to uh, be a little more creative and, you know, playful. And, and it, for them, having fun during sex is really important. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. Desire. So desire is someone who wants to be wanted. I'm into all of who you are. I love you, not just your beauty, but your patience, your kindness, what kind mm -hmm. of person you are. Mm -hmm. I love, like, I'm into all of you. That's really important for them. So how how would you speak that language to let them know that? Which, we're on which one? The desire. 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 So in each language, I break down the environment, the invitation, the foreplay, the sex act, and after. So mm -hmm. if I was doing desire and we go to, say, invitation, okay, well, it's different. So I would say, you know, I really want you. I've been thinking about you. All day oh, long. I, I'm hungry for you. <laughs> that person would say, go like, What have you just oh! taken? <laughs> Our, no. our producer, our producer is over there going like this. Okay. Right now. That's desire. Yeah. Okay? okay. You can mess them up. It's wonderful. Okay. 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 That's fun. Um, so you're, it's going to be more of a thought out I want process. You. Yeah, it's, yeah. I want you. Okay. It doesn't. No, it can be a text. I want your eye body. Uh huh. Okay. And they go. Oh, oh wait. Excuse I'm me. I'm wanted. <laughs> Uh -huh. Okay, that's why I have all married women on now the show book, today. That book is the five sex languages. That's a different book. It's okay, not in so this one. Okay, so pleasure. Pleasure. Um, that is someone who wants to experiment with sexuality spiritually, emotionally, language, positions, places. I mean, they want to they want to learn sexuality and they want to kind of keep amplifying. And it can be frustrating if you're like a patient because you're always going to have 
a spouse who's a different sex language than you. Yeah. That's God's blessing to grow you both up. Mm -hmm. But this person wants to keep pushing the edges and not necessarily in a bad way, not even in an ungodly way, just like, hey, I want to see how fast this Ferrari goes. So yeah. more creative. You know, I just want to know, okay. <laughs> you know? And it's, it's just the way they are designed. Okay, patience. They want time. They want time and often touch. Uh -huh. It's going to be the 20, 30 minute back rub that makes no sense to most men. Uh -huh. Are the rubbing the feet? Are touching my hair for 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. That is like, okay, why am I doing this? Well, because you want sex. That's why. Okay, keep doing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's I the patience. Think all girls kind of like the patience yeah. a little bit. Well, yeah. well, there's a lot of women that are patience, and there's a lot of guys who are desire. But, uh -huh. but see, if if a man understands, it's not about you being a woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. It's about the way you're made. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to serve the way you're made. Mm -hmm. Well, then it's a pleasure for me to give you that time. It's a pleasure for me to say, okay, it's 20 minutes for her to feel aroused. Mm -hmm. Well, then the 20 minutes becomes fun for me. It doesn't become, <sighs> she's a woman and I got to do my, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it gives you a different way of looking at it. Yeah. Another one is depression. And it, that can be, be for spiritual reasons. That can be emotional. That can be grief. That could be physiological. So depression could definitely affect. Well, one of the symptoms of depression is low sex drive. Mm -hmm. You know, weight no gain, sleep disturbance, difficulty concentrating, yeah. worthless feeling. Those are the yeah. symptoms of depression. And so one of those symptoms is low sex drive. Well, if you have a low sex drive and you're a 40-year-old man and you don't want to have sex with your wife, maybe you're depressed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let's fix the depression so we can get back to having sex. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So have you seen examples of that where you had oh, yeah. one or the other... Oh, yeah. And what would they do to help that? Because a lot of times you've got a genuine chemical imbalance going on there. If it's chemical, you would see a doctor. You can go homeopathic or you can go medical. And then you can also, but if it's also related to unresolved trauma or anger or, mm -hmm. or grief, then you need to process through that so that you can come out of it. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm, Paul, Paul said, sanctify your spirit, soul, and body. Find out where the depression is located and then minister to where it is located. Don't tell it where it's located. Find where it's located. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay, so what are some of the other causes? Well, uh, you also have where uh, low thyroid, also a medical condition. Which is a medical. Medical yeah. condition. You either have a good thyroid or you don't have a good thyroid. I, this person, no, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but again, those symptoms are very similar to depression. Mm -hmm. yeah. Concentrate, fatigue, low energy, low sexual desire. And uh, those are very common for low thyroid. Mm -hmm. And that can happen later on mm -hmm. in life. 30, 40s, and 50s, yeah. you should always get your thyroid checked. Yeah. Every, yeah. every decade you are uh, allowed to be alive, you should get evaluated. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Because they have things that they can help you oh, with. Oh, totally. Your you can be on yeah. thyroid medicine yeah. and be up in one or two days. Yeah. Feel like, whoa, I got gas in my tank. Yes. Right? <laughs> and it's just different yeah. because the chemical has yeah. not been there. You've either blown out your pituitary, your thyroid's messed up. Once right. you find out, you operate better. Yeah. Another, another physiological one is hormones. And now we're mm -hmm. mostly ladies here. Yes. But women don't get their, their testosterone checked. Mm -hmm. And testosterone, low testosterone in women, has exactly similar symptoms as depression or thyroid. Right. Except it has two worse ones. Not only do you have the low energy and difficulty concentrating, you're in a fog, you lose hair, but you also can be not able to have an orgasm. Well, if you're a woman and you haven't had an orgasm three, five, or ten years, I was with a lady just recently, hasn't had an orgasm, she's been married almost 20 years, and she's never even thought about getting evaluated. Mm. Mm. I'm like, I don't know who your doctor is, <laughs> yeah. but this is awful cruel to you, A, but it's also cruel to him because there's some pleasure he gets out of that encounter. Yeah. You okay? Know, yeah. And so... Get your, get your testosterone check. So well, get not it checked only that, and not, I mean, you should get all your hormones checked because we yeah. do shows on this all Absolutely. the time. Because, like, I know as I was going through menopause, um, I, I had, I, I get mine checked regularly. Right. And, as you um, should. And I remember went for a couple of weeks, could not sleep. I had never not been able not mm -hmm. to sleep. That That's a horrible thing, by the way, not being mm -hmm. able to sleep. And um, could not shut my brain off. And so went just to have it checked again, and, and my estrogen was nothing. Oh, none, my gosh. None. Mm -hmm. Neil. Mm -hmm. And she said, your adrenals will wake you up 
yeah. to find estrogen. <laughs> and so, I mean, as soon as I got... So they were looking yeah, for Yeah, I mean, it. she said that's just because of hormones. There's progesterone, there's yeah. estrogen, there's and testosterone. Stuff, stuff. Yeah. So it's balanced. very important yeah. to have balanced hormones, and it changes for women when they start going through mm -hmm. menopause. Absolutely, yeah. and sometimes before. So yeah. that that's one of the things I have women get checked if they're not... If and they're men will have not low orgasmic, testosterone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Men have low testosterone, they'll have erectile issues, they'll, they'll have low energy, all the same Medications symptoms. Medications affect yes. people too, don't they? So, and there are medical issues as well. Uh, but the, um, these are some of the top reasons why yeah. people will be sexless and married. And some of them are very fixable very quickly. Mm -hmm. Some of them take more work. Some of them take more honesty. Mm -hmm. But we can all have a great sex life. Christ died so we could have great mm -hmm. sex and yeah. have a great life. Mm -hmm. You know, so we don't need to, like, muddle around. We just need to get educated and mm -hmm. move to the next place with it. Yeah. And... Okay, so I have a question. So okay. I had a friend that was going a through... A friend. I love friends. That was going through an <laughs> issue like this. And I told her, I said, you should just, like, you know, like, pounce on him. Like, go and, like, totally. initiate. <laughs> totally. You know, and then, you know, see what happens. And so um, I think she did that, and it worked out well for her sometimes. Uh, worked out well for her. But for other people, if it if they're... Spouse. Not uh -huh. having sex, and then they, the other Try person, that. yeah, and then they shut them down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's is gonna that, hurt. Is it's that bad hurt. advice? She's because being then... so careful with her words. Yeah, it's Dr. Wise can say all these words. I'm like, you've never heard these on table. Yeah, yeah. What, what I'm saying is, so, what I'm saying no, 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 is, no, no, is it no. bad advice to tell somebody like, hey, just go bounce on your husband if they're going to get rejected and it's going to Well, I would, I would, I would add that caveat to it. And if it doesn't work, there's a more serious problem than him just having a bad day. Because a guy can have a bad day where he doesn't want to have sex. Two bad days in a row, probably not going to happen. Okay, so you know if this is going on for yeah. weeks and she's trying, uh, if they if they have the uh, intimacy anorexia and one of the things we talked about was we did, haven't talked about was the last reason which is schizoid personality disorder. This person doesn't attach to anybody mm -hmm. and they're like the loner, the person who lives right. out. Is that like from the root word like schizophrenic? No, no. It sounds like, like a bad thing. It, it is a bad thing because you really don't attach to anybody. Nobody knows who you are. You have no friends. Why? Um, you get Why no do you pleasure do that? out of life. Uh, well, basically, there's usually good issues. reasons. Well, usually it's worse. You're living in a family where there's no love. Mm. And, a and so your heart that closes. Your, or your heart closes. Okay, wait, but back to the answer. Is it bad to um, I would say they get it's, educated? It's decent advice to say, hey, go ahead and jump your husband. Actually, that's good advice for any woman, any time, <laughs> all and the, the husband time. Was a <laughs> I, I hope Daystar gets flooded with, I can't believe my wife jumped me because of the Joni show. <laughs> Rachel, Rebecca, we yes, love, yes. we love. Welcome, husbands out there. Yes, we love that. Love that show. It's Praise actually God. Joni's daughter that did that. Right. No, and there's okay. somebody <laughs> smiling in the there's audience. There's going to be a comment now. There's going to be a comment. Welcome to the show. So, <laughs> so it's okay to do that, and women should initiate sex. But if she gets rejected, I would just say, if you do that and you get rejected, that there's something more than normal yeah. going on and, and then get the sex lesson married yeah. and find out which one it is. Yeah. Like find often out which is one it, it is. anger and unforgiveness that's going on? It could be anger and unforgiveness. It could it could just be, you know, my, my dog just died and I'm not really that excited yeah. today. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't make sense to me personally, but I'm with you. Okay. But if it's like systemic where it's happening on a regular basis, then there is some issue that's not being addressed because it is abnormal. So just think how life could be different if you would just openly talk about things like this. Well, there's a children. trick though, Anna, though, that adolescence keeps moving down further. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so by the time you think you should be talking yes. to your, your children, you're two years too late because oh, yeah. you're going on your adolescent schedule, not oh, the current that's right, one. That's right. So and you, so there's okay, kind of a, there's but kind also of an there's issue different there. ways that people learn. And so I've talked to Jimmy Evans about this before is like some people are kinesthetic and some people are visual and some people learn by doing but it's like obviously sex is a you know something that's you only do within marriage so it's like how do you teach people how to have a good sex life with well, we many a, different ways of learning like well that's what still be christian and you know not no it needs to be godly that's where the five sex language is good because it gives them language and then they can experiment with the language Okay, right. like if I'm saying to you, I want you, that's different than, hey, let's have fun. That's different than, I want to take my time with you, and you respond to the time, mm -hmm. and now I got your number. Okay, now I know how to minister to you. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? So there yeah. is intelligent ways of doing that. And you don't need to watch dirty movies to get right. a great Absolutely. sex education. And, and don't you think, like you, we've talked about communicating with each other, your spouse, that what pleases you, what totally. you like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or being willing to say, hey, baby, what do you like? What, totally. what makes you totally. feel satisfied? What can I do yeah. here to make Absolutely. this awesome? Mm -hmm. That's what you call your sweetheart. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. So, <laughs> now, Anna, you got to tell Doug what you and Fred say to do when there's, there, there's arguments and strife <laughs> between a man and a wife. Fred has a 
the surefire way to Absolutely. solve that. Absolutely. My husband says if you are in an argument and you can't seem to get past it, you should have an understanding that you will both go to the bedroom, take off all your clothes, and just go to bed. Not necessarily to have sex, although it may come to that, but just to hold each other and give reassurance. And he said it is amazing how anger disappears when you do that. <laughs> that's, that's a hard one to do. That's well, tough. we know people who come back and told us, you know, young yeah. couples, yeah. and they said, it really works. It really does. Oh, yeah. well, it puts you in increase. a different frame, it different does. frame of mind. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. And you get to see the person as a person instead yeah. of the enemy. And so then you, you get to solve decide, do you want to hold on to the anger or do you want to get beyond this and let the marriage grow? <laughs> right, right, right. I just say, hey, baby, can we just kiss and make up? <laughs> and just Be take over. your clothes off. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, we only have about a minute or two left, but what would you say to those who are watching mm. that just find themselves in a desperate situation? Maybe sure. they're going through something that we've discussed today, mm. maybe something totally different that you're going through, but there is a real strain in your marriage. What would you say to encourage them? I would say that no matter where you are in your marriage, if you need some more information, get that, get educated. And if sex is an issue that you need to deal with, find out what it is, get to the bottom of it, because you deserve to have a great sex life. This is, you're in, Jesus wants you to. So take the next steps you need to do, whether that's information or whether that's talking to someone who knows more than you do about this, and open up, get some solutions, and there's hope. Mm. I've seen couples yeah. not have sex for 20 years. Yes. Within days, have wow. sex. Yes. I mean, it's not like yeah. it, it can be broken. What was the problem awesome with that particular know. marriage for 20 years? That was intimacy anorexia. And it was basically... Was it him or her? Him. And, uh, well, at some point it could have been both, but it was mostly him. And sometimes it just takes a man to say, knock it off. Mm -hmm. You're treating a daughter of God like this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he goes, no, I didn't know that. Yes, he absolutely hates that. Yeah. Now go take your wife and go make love to her. And don't come back tomorrow unless you do, because otherwise you're wasting my time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, no, that's not my general style, but sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it takes that. But Rachel, sometimes, you like style. Yeah. But sometimes it, it takes someone just to go, you are so out of line. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Stop it. This is sin. Mm -hmm. You're withholding. Don't tell me yeah. you're a pastor and you're withholding sex from your wife because that's right. ungodly. So there's something about the man-to-man, -man, right? There is man-to-man -man stuff. Mm -hmm. That's and, a different book. And but yeah. the Bible talks about withhold yourself for prayer and fasting. Right. I'm like, you should okay. be skinny so or dead. Like, say, yeah, come on. You should really be skinny. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, All the fasting you've been doing. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, hasn't this been good? This has really been very informative today. Um, we are out of time. I want to thank Dr. Doug for joining us at the table once again. If you're living in a sexless marriage, you don't have to stay that way. Uh, I'll tell you what, that's why we do shows like this. You can pick up uh, his new DVD, Sexless, Sexless and Married. I guess there's probably a lot more information on there. Of course, you can visit drdougweiss.com for resources, professional counseling, and more. And if they can't come to Colorado Springs, you can do Pick phone, up the phone. Mm -hmm. phone consultations. And if you or your spouse need prayer today and you'd like to talk to someone, that's why the toll-free number is on the screen so that we can pray for you. That's what we do. That's why we're here. You don't have to give us your name or information. Maybe you just want someone to pray with you. That's why we have men and women standing by 24 hours a day, seven days a week, ready to take your call. Again, you can send us your request by visiting daystar.com and clicking on prayer. You can send in a prayer request as well. We pray over those every day and your prayer requests are important to us. Again, if you'd like to share your thoughts on today's program, be sure to leave us a comment on Facebook or Twitter and use hashtag Joni Table Talk. We always love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Doug, for being here. Thank mm -hmm. you, all you married ladies. And we'll <laughs> see you next time. Bye-bye for today. This has been a Daystar television production.